Something really crazy is happening to me. I need to stop it, but I don't know how. It's because you're a horrible person. If you've seen the newest Smile movie, then you might be wondering why we didn't come any closer to understanding what this entity is or how to defeat it. There's a theory that I found on Reddit that will be the premise of this video. And it not only explains the nature of this entity, but it also explains the weaknesses that might be able to lead to its defeat. This is a detailed breakdown of what the Smile entity actually is, how it operates, and what we can do to defeat it. Like and subscribe for more videos. At first glance, the Smile Entity might appear to be a supernatural curse, but this theory suggests that it's actually a biological organism with electromagnetic capabilities. This creature isn't just a phantom or a demonic being, but a conscious parasitic entity that has evolved to control its host by manipulating electromagnetic fields in the brain. It's capable of altering perceptions, including hallucinations and controlling behavior, all by tapping into the brain's natural electrical impulses. However, while it believes itself to be an unstoppable curse, this belief is a product of its own self-delusion, and its power actually comes from a misunderstood biological process. This theory is making the argument that this smile entity isn't a demon like what most people think it is, and that might be the case. But what exactly are the traits that makes something a demon? Demons are often depicted with having supernatural powers, being active mostly at night, having a bad smell, the temperature dropping when they're close by, they have an endless amount of stamina, a high pain tolerance, they don't need sleep, they also have emotions, knowledge, self-awareness, and consciousness. The Smile Entity doesn't have all these traits, but does it need all these traits to be considered a demon? Or perhaps it is only one part of a demon? This theory never said that it wasn't a demon at all, but it is more than just your average demon, and it works completely different from demons in some cases. For example, the Smile Entity doesn't just come out at night. In fact, it doesn't seem to matter what time of day it is at all, which makes it even more terrifying. It is also only able to manipulate the infected user, which makes it have limitations that a regular demon wouldn't have. The smile creature operates as an electromagnetic parasite, controlling its victims by latching onto their brains and controlling their neural pathways. This allows it to create vivid hallucinations, amplify fear, and manipulate the body as if it were a puppet. While it's convinced itself it needs trauma to feed, this is likely an addiction to suffering and not a biological necessity. Evidence of its delusion is seen in the film when the creature doesn't simply take control and kill. It orchestrates elaborate scenes of torment, like forcing its host to make a phone call to draw in the next victim. It could easily jump to a new host at any moment, but it chooses not to, believing that prolonging fear and trauma is the best way to sustain itself. However, this is a self-imposed limitation. A crucial piece of evidence is how the creature tricks the main character in the first film into thinking she has defeated it, only to manipulate her into leaving isolation and calling someone to spread the curse. If the smile monster could control the host indefinitely, it would simply make her walk to the next victim and pass the curse on. But it doesn't, because it can't hold the host for too long. While some might argue that the monster does this because it enjoys the process, the reality is more complicated. The creature itself believes that it enjoys the process, when in fact it's constrained by its own body. Biology. The process works for it, so it doesn't change it. Reinforcing the one-track mindset that proves it lacks tactical thinking. It's locked into this behavior because it has convinced itself that this is the best way, when in reality it's just limited by how much control it can exert. I actually really like this idea of the electromagnetic parasite that this theory suggests. And it does make complete sense because this entity can make you relive your worst memories over and over again. The creature also seems to have unlimited knowledge of the person who is infected. And it says things like, I've enjoyed living inside you and stuff like that, as if it creates a temporary home in the mind of the infected individual. However, I don't necessarily believe that this smile entity is feeding itself off of trauma and fear due to a self-imposed limitation. We can clearly see in the first film that the smile entity's true form is a lot smaller than the entity in Smile 2, indicating that this entity is physically benefiting from the fear and trauma that it feeds itself on with each person it infects. It might also be the case that it gets stronger depending on the will of the person being infected. This can be proven after how much bigger the entity gets after feeding itself to Rose. Rose did have a strong will and she really fought hard against the entity before her time was up. It only consumes two more people before Sky Riley, and by that time, it's at least five times bigger. No, 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 go away from me! What? What is it? Go away from me! It could also be due to the amount of trauma that someone has as well. While the smile entity does have a clear biological process, the entity is also driven by a complex psychology. It's convinced itself that it's a demonic and cursed being, something supernatural, when it is actually just a biological organism. The hallucinations it forces on its host, like entering the body through the mouth, further fuel this belief. 
The creature's psychological profile points to an addiction to fear and control. It derives pleasure from its victim's suffering, prolonging their fear because it enjoys watching their mental state deteriorate. Over time, this addiction has become so ingrained in this entity that it be actually believes that it needs trauma to survive, even though it likely does not. This psychology creates a predictable pattern in the creature's behavior. It does play with its prey, drawing out their torment not out of necessity, but because it has developed an emotional need for it. This makes the smile monster more than just a predator. It's a sadistic entity that derives gratification from its victim's suffering. I have no doubt that this entity feels pleasure from the suffering of its victims. But I also believe there's a difference between surviving and thriving. I mean, sure, the entity might be able to survive by just killing off its victims in less than a day, but it probably wouldn't be nearly as big and powerful as it is now. However, it could still be possible that the entity has convinced itself of something that it's actually not. The key to defeating the smile monster lies in understanding its biology and psychology. Here's how we can target its weaknesses. Number 1. Disrupt its electromagnetic control. The smile monster merges with the host's brain by manipulating its electromagnetic fields. During this integration phase, it is vulnerable to disruptions in these fields. By inducing a seizure or using EMP-like devices, we can overload its control and sever its connection to the host. This is not just a disruption of the brain. It's a direct attack on the creature itself. Number 2. Exploit its single-minded focus. The small monster can only control one host at a time, and this focus limits its potential. Knowing that it can't spread to multiple people, we can anticipate its moves and trap it during its integration phase. Almost time, Rose. The creature's belief in its own superiority does make it predictable. And by using this to our advantage, we can disrupt its control when it is most vulnerable. This one might be a plausible theory if it wasn't for the fact that the second Smile movie hinted at there being more than one host at a time. Number 3. Challenge its self-delusion. The Smile entity believes that it must use trauma and fear to survive. But this is not a biological necessity. By disrupting its psychological attachment to torment, we can weaken its power over its victims. It is a biological organism, not a demon or a curse. Understanding this allows us to target the creature's real vulnerabilities rather than being caught up in its supernatural imagery. The only problems I have with this one is that the terms biological organism and demon are being used pretty loosely here. A biological organism can be defined as a living entity that can respond to stimuli, grow, reproduce, and maintain homeostasis, which means to maintain a state of balance within their internal environment despite changes in their external environment. Now, if we look at the raw definition of a demon, it describes demons to be an evil spirit or devil that can be thought to possess a person or act as a tormentor in hell. With these two definitions, I would argue that it is both a biological organism and a demonic entity, because it can grow and reproduce when responding to stimuli, and is a devilish creature that can possess people by manipulating them and tormenting them with their own past memories. The Smile Monster is a biological and psychological hybrid, a parasitic entity that thrives on its victim's fear but is ultimately vulnerable to its misunderstanding of its own nature. By targeting its electromagnetic control during the integration phase and exploiting its psychological dependence on trauma, we can sever its connection to the host and defeat it. It may believe itself to be indestructible, but its reliance on prolonged torment and its self-delusion are its greatest weaknesses. We now know that it is not invincible, and with the right strategy, we can finally bring it down. But how though? This theory doesn't really explain how we can target its electromagnetic control, or how to exploit its psychological dependence on trauma. But here's how I think we could defeat it. If this entity truly is a parasite that uses electromagnetism to control its victims, then why not use electromagnetic fields to destroy it? There is a study done by PubMed which concludes that exposure to electromagnetic fields from things like your smartphone can damage or kill single-celled organisms. Microwaves can also be used to kill certain types of parasites. However, for the monstrosity, you would probably need the biggest electromagnetic field you could get your hands on that can generate insane amounts of microwaves. What do you guys think? Have we cracked the monstrosity's weaknesses, or is there something else that we should consider? Swap your thoughts in the comments below on what you think. I've swapped my thoughts, and if you want to see my thoughts on Smile 2, then click right up here, and I'll see you on the other side.